Good morning, CCLS. It's Ash Wednesday, and we're going to begin with a little focus on God's Word. Today, as we think about Ash Wednesday, I want you to, to focus on two main things. Ash Wednesday is all about, one, the repentance of our sins, moving away from those sinful actions, understanding the consequence is death, and Jesus is suffering and death for our sake. And secondly, we remember our identity. The fact that God in Christ has redeemed us, made us his own. And because of that, we have the promise of eternal life and salvation. So what is Ash Wednesday? Ash Wednesday is the first day in the season of Lent, a time where we focus on Christ's suffering for our sake. It's 40 days in the church here, uh, reflecting Jesus' 40 days in the wilderness when he fasted and he was tempted. Now, during these 40 days, uh, people often uh, give up things so that they can focus on what Jesus did for us. Uh, because of our sins, Jesus had to take our sins upon himself and suffer in a human form. And so people give up all sorts of things, uh, chocolate, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, this Lent, I'm going to give up all drinks except for water. And I know it's going to be tough, but what that's going to do is it's going to help me mentally and physically focus on what Jesus did for me. That helps me consider the consequences of sins and turn away from sins and turn towards Jesus. Now you can give up things uh, during Lent too if you want. You don't have to. There's no mandate. Um, it's just something that helps us to focus. Uh, but don't give up reading or don't give up homework. Uh, that doesn't work, right? You got to give up something um, to help you focus on what Jesus did for you and, and understand the consequences of sin. And that's the other point of Ash Wednesday. Uh, why is it called Ash Wednesday? It's because it, it takes us back to that original sin in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve disrespected God and took from the fruit of the, the tree they weren't supposed to. And when God spoke to Adam, he, he talked about this great curse that was across the whole world because of that one sin. Moreover, he said, from dust you are to dust you will return. God was talking about death, the ultimate consequence for sin. Now, why did he use those words? Well, Adam was named Adam because he was made out of the dust of the ground. And in Hebrew, the original language, ground is named Adama. So out of the Adama came Adam. And so you have this word play where from dust you are to dust you will return. Over the, the history of the church, the church used, started to use ashes to help draw the connection to the consequence of sins, to help us, again, Focus on our sins and repent, turn away from those sins, and turn towards God. And so on Ash Wednesday, uh, what usually happens, the tradition is, uh, you take ashes, and the tradition, tradition is to take the, the burnt palm branches from the previous year, and uh, the pastor usually takes those ashes, and he creates a, a cross on your forehead of ashes, and he says, from dust you are to dust you, re you will return. Now again, this helps us remember the consequence of our sins so that we can repent and turn away from those sins in our lives. But it also does something better. It reminds us of our identity, as it reminds us of our baptism. Now how do ashes remind us of our baptism? Well, here's what it looks like. You know that cross on your forehead? The pastor in your baptism not only put a cross on your forehead, but he also put a cross upon your heart marking you as one who is redeemed by Christ the crucified. Those are the words he used. And so this idea of baptism is the way God takes you and he draws you into the life of Jesus. He connects you to Jesus in his death. Uh, let, me, let me tell you a story maybe to illustrate the point. Um, this young boy went to church one day and his little sister was baptized. And he thought it was really cool, right? And so... When he got home that day, and mom was kind of getting lunch ready for the family and everything, uh, he went in the back and he thought it was a good idea to baptize his baby bunny, his little stuffed animal, right? And so the boy goes out in the sandbox, and mom's kind of watching this from the, the kitchen window, and he, he gets out a shovel and he digs a hole in the sandbox. Then he goes over and he gets the, the water hose and he brings it out to the, the sandbox. He then takes up his bunny. And mom's kind of scratching her head going, what is this boy doing? And uh, the, the, the boy takes the bunny, and he takes the water hose, and he says, Bunny, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, into the Holy Ago. 
Now, the boy didn't quite get the words right, right? It isn't in the Holy Ago, it's in the Holy Ghost, is what he heard from the pastor. But the boy understood exactly what baptism was all about. You see, in baptism, God takes us and that old sinful Adam, that, 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 that self that is full of sin, and he says, I don't want you to live in sin for the rest of your life. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, into the Holy Ego. And through the water and the Word, God takes our sinful nature and he buries it with Christ. He actually buries it with Christ. And he drowns it. He kills it. So that just as we're united with Christ in our baptism in death, we can also be united with Christ in his resurrection. You see, because Jesus didn't just die on the cross for your sins, he rose from the dead to make you alive and new again. And that's the something better. You see, when we talk about being children of God, loved and saved by Jesus, we're talking about eternal life. We're talking about the hope that lives in us. We're talking about new life. And if you ever feel uncertain about this hope, if you ever think, well, maybe it's not for me, or maybe I sinned too much, or this week I did something that is going to keep me from being with Jesus forever, think about this. Uh, Martin Luther put it this way. He said, uh, when, a, when a baby animal is born, the first thing that comes out is what? Any guesses? First thing that comes out. It's the head, right? The head comes out. And once the head comes out, what's coming next? Hopefully something, because if it's just a head, we got a problem, folks, right? No, but the head comes out, and then what comes next? The body, right? So wherever the head goes, the body follows. Now the Bible teaches us that in baptism we're united in Christ and that Christ is the head and that you and I are part of the body. Therefore, wherever Christ goes, we go. Christ went to the cross and in, into the tomb for our sins. In baptism, we've been buried with him. To dust we are, to dust we, re we will return. But Christ rose from the dead physically. He's alive now and he lives forever. And wherever the head goes, you and I are going as well. That's how sure and certain your hope is of eternal life. This Easter, instead of focusing on the bunny, remember this analogy. And remember, when we say Christ is risen, he's risen indeed. We're really going to be confessing, we will rise, we will rise indeed. And we'll wait to say that next word, hallelujah, until Easter. But that's Ash Wednesday, and that's the message for you this morning. But it's not just a message to just listen to and leave here during the devotion time, and the chapel time. It's a message to take into your life. You see, what we hope for shapes what we live for. Let me say it one more time. What we hope for shapes what we live for. Knowing that end, knowing that we have eternal life, shapes everything we do here at CCLS and in our lives today. May God bless you and give you his peace as you walk with Christ today. Amen. Have a great day, everyone.